call this meeting to order. We are ask our chaplain if he would uh, lead us in prayer and a pledge, please. Ask everyone to stand. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you today for our opportunity to meet in this meeting. We thank you also for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us in this community and our school system. Our Heavenly Father, we also pray for the many people that have been sick and that have lost their lives uh, in recent months. We pray that you put your arms around them and help them through this troubling period. We also pray for our teachers and our staff and our superintendent and everyone who works with kids in our uh, system. Please help them as we try to work through the problems that we have. We also pray for our first responders and the actions that they take to protect us both at home and abroad. We pray all of these things in thy name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, but this time we have the approval of the minutes. So moved. Get a second. Second. Move proper second to approve the minutes from previous meeting and in readiness. All in favor by sign of aye. Aye. Opposed motion carried agenda adoption. So moved. Second. Second. Move proper second that we adopt agenda for this evening. In on readiness, all in favor by sign of aye. Aye. Opposed motion carried announcements. In announcement, uh, Mr. Stringfellow? No, sir. Dr. Foster? No. No, sir. All right. Mr. Superintendent? No, sir. Let the record reflect Ms. McDade is out. She had a previous engagement uh, for the day. Okay. Um, reports of recognition? All right. No reports of recognition. Citizen request. Mr. Superintendent, who do we have? Yes, sir. We have several. Um, the first group, uh, I think there will be two representatives. Um, so first would be Dr. Bucknell and his representative as well. Okay. Uh, did you, you let them know of the uh, minute stipulation? Yes, they understand the minutes. Okay. Superintendent Threadgill and members of the board, I'm Dr. Michael Bucknell, a 17-year doctor of chiropractic and parent of three. We met September 15th with Mr. Threadgill in which he said he would look at the rest of the September regarding ending the mask mandate. Daily new cases peaked August 24th, just over 6,000 to under 600 yesterday in this state with a population of roughly 4.9 million people. Considering Baldwin County, Gulf Shores, and Sarah Land have already dropped their mask mandates, I fully expected to come to this meeting and hear a vote to do the same today. Looking forward, I feel it's a waste of time to try to win a war of so-called research against institutions with endless cash and connections to legitimize anything they want. Instead, let's consider the record. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, children have represented 15.7% of all cases with less than 2% resulting in hospitalization. Though every death obviously is a concern, less than 0.03 of all child COVID cases has resulted in death. There is simply no sense in the data that children are an at-risk population and therefore deserve to be practically the last segment of our society still in lockdown. If it's not the children we're protecting, then let adults choose what they want to do as they feel fit. We were all told that two weeks of lockdown would flatten the curve. We were told to wear masks and social distance, that would end it. We locked down beaches in the middle of summer, figure that one out. Uh, then we expected, we were told the vaccine would end the pandemic. Now we'll see they've changed the script because the vaccines don't actually stop infection or transmission, but only lessen symptoms. Nonetheless, we have to stay masked until everyone, including children, are forced to take it anyways. Now you need booster shots, apparently forever. Just last week, a CDC advisory panel refused to endorse these boosters just to be unusually overruled by the CDC director. States, including Alabama, have preemptively banned vaccine passports, yet all you have to do is look at the headlines to see that the numbers no longer matter. Only that everyone takes a vaccine that won't keep you from getting sick or transmitting what it was originally promised to make you immune from. Their goal is digital passports. If you don't comply, you can't fly, go to sporting events, concerts, amusement parks, or your children go to school. Now ask yourself, are you okay with parents being forced to comply, making their children take whatever 
They decide in order to maintain entry into basic functions of society, like receiving an education. Are you really okay with every single teacher and employee being forced to take another shot every six to nine months in order to keep their jobs like our military now is? Most everyone, including yourselves, are going to work out to dinner, packing football stadiums, and rarely practicing the measures our kids still are. It is our duty to these children to realize that this path is not okay and give them their educational and social lives back, not being trained in a perpetual state of fear of others. I leave you with this question. What happens with endless spikes or variants in the future? Do we go back to masking our school closures despite ample evidence of the past behind us? We can't keep acting like vaccine compliance is going to end this when they've already admitted they can't. If your advisors are unanimous, despite what we've all experienced, maybe it's time for different opinions. Thank you. Thank you so much. So you guys seen us here last month, last month protesting mass mandates. Our sign says parents' choice. After multiple emails, phone calls, conversations, and valuable time, we realized that there are multiple issues affecting our children across all schools in our county, none of which involved us parents. Lack of communication regarding bus routes that are doubled and tripled without notifying parents requiring some students, mine, to sit on the floor. Massive irregularities across all schools in addressing positive COVID-19 cases among students. Lack of instruction and our guidance to students that are out due to COVID-19, leaving students to perform and score poorly once they return. Options for school lunches are the lack thereof. Lack of communication between the school board of education, schools, and parents that we know of to date, neither the Board of Education, Superintendent, nor schools have made an official announcement regarding the homecoming dances, leaving parents to scramble with limited options to provide their children with a sense of normalcy amid unnecessary COVID-19 restrictions. The most recent example of these, most recent example of many of these, there has been no goal set by the Mobile County Public School Board to reach in order to, for the man, mask mandate to be lifted, despite the total percentage of school students right now, today, as of 9:23, to be 0.03 percent. There is a lack of urgency to replace multiple dilapidated roofs, but we're going to build five brand new football stadiums. Causey Middle School literally has an obstacle course of buckets in its gym. Have you all been there? We are, we are the largest school system in the state of Alabama, yet we have the most restrictive policies and procedures when it comes to participating in these board meetings. Even when we do participate in these board meetings, our voices and concerns fall on deaf ears. There is no resolution. There is not even a follow-up. We want more involvement in the choices and decisions that directly affect our children. We want more transparency and information when it comes to our children and their day-to-day -day activities. We want answers and consistency regarding COVID-19 measures. We want more communication with the school board members that we elected and that we can replace. We want communication, accountability, and transparency. After inquiring with multiple departments across Mobile County Cup Public School System, we find, we find answers to some of these questions. We are ultimately told that we, to receive these answers, we have to submit a form, a formal request for information. I'm sure that you guys are aware in the state of Alabama that there is no time frame legally placed on the recipient of the formal request to provide the information. However, as notified in the letter that you received from us, we strongly believe that 30 days is ample time to fulfill this request. Should this request go unfulfilled without any communications from Mobile County Public School Board, further legal action will be taken in the following months. You guys are on the clock. If there's anybody that wants to join, we have a Facebook page, Mobile County, Mobile County Public School, Parents for Choice, please join our fight. Mr. Superintendent, you have anyone else? Yes, we have one more, Dr. Campanosa. Thank you for having me, Dr. Lou Campanosi, President of the Common Sense Campaign Tea Party. I've passed out the handout for each of you. Take a quick look at it. My remarks will be at the front. I've offered a letter from Congressman Michael Walz, retired Green Beret, um, who sent a letter about this question of critical race theory to the Commandant of West Point. Uh, and I will read from that in a second. 
And then I've offered this from uh, Christopher Rufo, one of these individuals who's written extensively about this, and I think it's important for you to have some background information be beyond what I'm going to give you in three minutes. Um, so why am I here? First of all, the question of critical race theory is, is important for us going down the road. It's also important to understand that common sense, along with other conservative groups in the state, are trying to defuse this. We don't want to see this as a political issue between Republicans and Democrats. We don't want to make it a racial issue. Our approach has been to have teams go to various boards of education in the state in a biracial manner. Unfortunately, today, my biracial partner is selling his house in Florida, and so he couldn't be here today. His name is George Williams. Some of you may know George, longtime Mobilian, number two man in the Alabama G GOP uh, hierarchy. At any rate, George and I have been to Baldwin County. We've been to places in Birmingham, and I think what we're trying to establish is, like I said, this is an issue that should be approached by, in a biracial manner. Now, the superintendent and I had a good hour-long conversation six weeks or, or, or so ago talking about this. We had agreement on some portions of it. We had disagreement on other portions of it. One thing that you all have to accept at this particular juncture is that the, stu the school board, the state school board, has already passed something along the lines of banning critical race theory. So, since I only have a minute left to go, all I would ask you to do is take a look at the information that I've provided you. Think carefully about the, de the destructive nature of what is being told, okay? Let me just read this from my Waltz letter, okay? Dr. Anderson is a controversial partisan academic who has made no secret where she stands. In her book, she mentions, the trigger for white rage inevitably is black advancement. It is not the mere presence of black people that is the problem. It is the blackness with ambi ambition, drive, person, aspirations. Okay, if you buy that, then everything that we've seen for the last 55 years after the Dr. King revolution, which brought about social and political change of an order that most of us who are here, like I'm in my mid-70s, it was a revolution. If we go back to what this lady said, we're going in the wrong direction. Thank you for your time, and thank you for letting me have it. Ms. Superintendent, do you have anybody else? No, sir. Okay, we are full to the agenda. <clears throat> are we ready? Yes, sir. Ready? Okay. Uh, action item, first let me Go to action item 60. We will pull action item 60. All right, so action item G1. So, Mr. Superintendent, what, what's going on with 60? You just want to make some changes? I think we don't have any. No yeah, we don't have any names for. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. I'll just move them. Okay, right. go. Proceed. Okay, action item G1 is the approval of the 2022 budget. I ask that the board approve action item G1, approval of the 2022 budget. What's the pleasure of the board? Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll leave action item G60 in. All right, let the record reflect that item G60 is included in today's agenda. All right, what's the place of the board on action item one? Mr. Chairman, I move for approval of the 2022 budget as submitted. All right, get a second. Second. Move for second to approve action item one, which is approval of the 2022 budget and on readiness. All in favor by sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, action item G2 is the general liability and auto lab liability. Uh, our liability insurance uh, will expire September the 30th. Uh, so I ask that we approve the renewal of our general liability and auto li liability. Mr. President of the Board. Mr. Chairman. Dr. Foster. Uh, move approval of number two, agenda item two. You got a second? Second. Move approval of second that we approve extra item uh, two. In on readiness, all in favor by sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 
Okay, action item three, resolution uh, to have a line of credit of 36, 36 million dollars just in case of a potential shortfall or delay with the state or local revenue or a potential pro proration. I ask the board to approve the line of credit of $36 million. Mr. Chairman. Dr. Foster. Move approval of agenda item number three. You get a second. All right, move prop second. We approve action agenda item number three. In our readiness, all in favor by sign of aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carried. Okay, action item G4, the approval of 2021-2022 salary schedule um, that will take place October the 1st, 2021. I ask that you approve action item G4, approval of 2021-22 salary schedule. Mr. President of the Board. Mr. Chairman, I, I move for approval of the 2021-22 uh, salary schedule. Do the second? Second. Do the proper second, we approve action item four, the approval of the 2021-22 salary schedule. Any unreadiness? All in favor by sign of aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carried. Action item G5, the approval of changes to the 2021-22 policy hand, handbook. Um, we had several policy changes uh, that you were aware of. I ask that we approve action item G5, approval of changes of the policy hand, handbook. Well, it's a pleasure to vote. Move for approval. Get a second. Second. Move a proper second to approve the um, changes to the 21-22 policy handbook. And on readiness, all in favor by sign of aye. 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 Opposed, motion care. Action item G6, edge annuity to provide instructional services for fall and spring semester of 2022 for 400 kindergartners through fifth grade and also 56th graders uh, to enroll in Mobile County's virtual learning school. That's not to exceed $1.4 million and it's coming out of ESSA funds. I ask that you approve action item G6 from edge annuity. Just pleasure to board. Mr. Chairman, since we have vetted these in a work session, and most of this is contracts, uh, spending that ESSER money, as uh, the superintendent had addressed, I move for approval action items 6 through 20. All right. We get a second? Second. Move uh, proper second, and we approve action items 6 through 20. And on written this, as Dr. Uh, Mr. Stringford said, all of these items have been vetted in our previous work session. Uh, questions and additional information have been provided to the board, so that's the reason we take them. Okay, any further unreadiness? All in favor by sign of aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, action item G21 is with Alta Point Health System uh, with Pathway Elementary and Pathway Middle uh, to provide two mental health therapists uh, for the Pathway Elementary and Middle School. These are full time therapists. Uh, that's coming out of federal funds for $75,797.50. What's the pleasure to vote? Mr. Chairman. Dr. Foster. Uh, move approval of items 21. Uh, these are all contracts for the most part with uh, health care systems and with Point Academy. <laughs> items 21 through uh, 28. All right, get a second. Second. Move prop second. We approve action items 21 through 28. Any non redness? All in favor by sign of aye. Aye. Opposed the motion carried. Okay, action item, <coughs> excuse me, G29 is the agreement between the um, county commissions with Big Brother, Big Sister of South Alabama to provide mentoring services to ensure a well rounded education and to improve the health and safety of students under Title IV. This is also coming out of Title IV budget for $45,000. I ask that you approve action item G29 with Big Brothers, Big Sisters. What's the pleasure of the board? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move for approval action items 29 through 40, please. All right. Get a second? Second. Move and proper second. We approve action, action, action item 29 through 40. And in readiness, all in favor by sign of aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Action item G41, the bridge to provide supplemental tutoring, supplies, and staff professional development to assist and serve delinquent and neglect or at-risk students. Uh, that's coming out of NND funds for $12,000. I ask that you approve action item 41 with the bridge. What's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, move Foster. approval of uh, 41 uh, through 49. All right, we got a motion to get a second. 
That we approve action item 41 through 49? Yes. Okay. Enter on readiness. All in favor by sign of aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carried. All right, action item G50 is the timber sale of the Grand Bay track. It's uh, approximately 79 acres. We had one bidder. Um, the, we went with the highest bidder, which was the only one with CSP services uh, for $171,171, which is a revenue. So I ask that you approve action item G50, timber sale of the Grand Bay track. What's the pleasure of the board? Well, Mr. Chairman, I move for approval of action item 50 and 51. They both are involved with the timber sale, as uh, the superintendent has men mentioned. So I move for approval of those two items. All right, get a second. Second. Move probably second that we approve action item 50 and 51. In on readiness. All in favor by sign of aye. 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 Opposed, motion carry. Action item G52 is the lease agreement between us and WHO. Uh, Weaver and Son for McDonald Road. Uh, they're requesting the use of 0.4 acre plot of undeveloped land adjacent to McDonald Road uh, near Haskew to use as a construction staging and material storage um, site. Uh, that agreement is to be rented uh, for $1,500 per year. Uh, I ask that you approve action item G52, the lease agreement between Weaver and Son. What's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman. Dr. Foster. Move approval of the two leases, 52 and 53, mm -hmm. and the personnel items 54 um, through 64. Get a second? Second. Move probably second. We approve the action items as stated by Dr. Foster in our readiness. All in favor by sign of aye. 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 Opposed, motion carry. Okay, on to the consent uh, agenda. H1 was with Bishop State Community College to contract with Bishop State to provide sponsorship funding for TV broadcasting and regular uh, high school foot, football games. Uh, that agreement is with Bishop State Community College. Uh, the amount is for $4,000 to be applied to the uh, MCPSS TV station. Mr. Chairman. Dr. Foster. Move approval of uh, the consent agenda Item one. All right, get a second. Second. All right, move a proper second. We approve action item one. Uh, in on readiness, all in favor vote by sign of aye. 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 Let the record show that I um, recuse myself from voting from action item one in as much as I got 45 years at Bishop State. So. <laughs> all right, H2 is with HMH for Spencer West Westlawn to provide the AMIRA assessment program for the faculty and students of Spencer West, West Lawn. This will help with the reading assistant that listens to and assess and coach coaches K-3 students using speech recognitions to grow vocabulary, fluency, and comprehension. That's coming out of Title I funds for $4,000. It's a pleasure to the board. Mr. Chairman, I move Speaker. for approval uh, consent agenda items H2 through 13. All right, get a second. Second. Move proper second. We approve uh, consent agenda action 2 through 13. In on readiness, all in favor by sign of aye. 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 Opposed, motion carried. All right, H13 is various bids along with H. Is that it? We yes. just did. We, did. we just yeah. approved 13. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Student expulsions. All right, on to the student expulsions. I, I think you have two student expulsions. Is that, is that yes, correct? Sir. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. I ask you to approve okay. the student well, expulsions. What's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, uh, move approval of uh, uh, student expulsions one and two. I right, get a second. Second. Uh, all right, in on readiness, all in favor by sign of aye. 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 Opposed, motion carry. All right, the next is, go ahead, Mr. Superintendent. Um, <clears throat> J1 is informational, is our monthly fin financial statements, and J2 is purchase orders, 5000 and over. Okay. Let me make those a matter of record. We have any attorney client privileges? No, sir. Okay. Uh, any schedule of meetings, Mr. Hatt? Uh, every, every Wednesday through the end of October, we have a hearing schedule. So we have one scheduled Wednesday starting at 9 or 830? Uh, 9. 9. Okay. All right. Beginning next week. Yes, sir. All right, not this week. No, 
we do have one. There is one. We have one this beginning this week then. Okay. I'm sorry, I meant to say every Wednesday from here to the end of Okay. All right. We, what, all board members will be present? I'll be here. Yes. Dr. Foster and myself, yes. I'll be here. In the, sir. Will you be present for the hearing? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So we'll be here for you, okay? Um, Dr. Mr. Stringfellow, you have anything further? No, sir, I do not. Dr. Foster? I'd just like to uh, once again say that, uh, uh, you know, the board is, is, uh, is missing uh, LaVon Manzi, just as the rest of our, our community is. He was a significant other on this board for, for the six years that he served on this board. And more so than anyone else, I think, that uh, was on the board at that time. Uh, he was the first to reach out to me after I was elected and uh, uh, maintained contact with him even after he has been on the, uh, and I know others have as well, even after he's been on the city council and uh, want uh, the public to know that we certainly miss our friend and we, we're certainly uh, praying for the family. Okay. Mr. Hallwell? No, sir. Mr. Uh, Superintendent, you have anything? Okay, let me just echo the comments of uh, Dr. Foster. Uh, it was to my surprise, believe it or not, that I didn't find out that he was only 38 years old after serving next to him. That was a, a, a testament to his level of maturity. Um, he was a great young man. He, he uh, endured a lot of, on his health, and uh, he's going to be truly missed. And I ex expressed those concerns in the, um, on behalf of the board at the funeral there. Okay, here, no further item, we have a motion to adjourn. So moved. The second. Move proper second, we adjourn the meeting. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carried. Meeting adjourned.